Hi, Terry Shaningfeld for UAB School of Medicine. Heterogeneity is always present in a systematic review at one level or another. The key is, is how important and how much heterogeneity is present. In this video, I'll describe what heterogeneity is and give you some sense of the measures that researchers use in quantifying the presence or the importance of heterogeneity. So one of the goals of a systematic review and especially a meta-analysis is to combine studies to give a more precise estimate of effect. An important decision that re the systematic reviewers need to decide is whether it's appropriate to combine studies. Or are they dealing with apples and oranges? And we don't want to combine apples and oranges because we'll get something weird um, that really doesn't make much sense. What we really want to do is just combine apples. And it doesn't matter whether the apples look a little different. It matters that they're at least all apples. So taking this analogy to look at a real study, here's a forest plot of a systematic review published in the Annals of Internal Medicine looking at heparin in venous thromboembolism prophylaxis in medical and stroke patients. So the decision we have to make in these nine studies that are here is, is it fair to combine all these studies that look a little bit different? Are they all apples or are they apples and oranges? And what we're talking about is heterogeneity. So what authors of systematic reviews need to do is look at the studies and see if they're just too heterogeneous to combine. And what heterogeneity is is differences between studies that are not due to chance. Now, there will always be chance play. If we even take the same group of patients and repeat a study over and over, it will be a little bit different. But what heterogeneity gets at is differences between the studies that aren't just random chance happenings. And there's two types of heterogeneity, this clinical and statistical heterogeneity. Now, clinical heterogeneity is always present. We just have to accept that. And it's due to differences in the patients enrolled in the studies, the different study settings. Um, sometimes there can be slight differences in study design or quality of the individual studies. The interventions, even if they seem to be the same drug, can be given slightly differently. There's often co-interventions that are done differently between the studies. And the outcomes, even if they seem to be the exact same thing like a myocardial infarction, that definition has changed over time and the lab tests used to measure for it have changed over time. So clinical heterogeneity is always present. And your judgment about whether it's present or not requires no fancy calculations. You just use your clinical knowledge to make that decision. Now, statistical heterogeneity is not always present. And in statistical heterogeneity, the individual trials have results that aren't consistent with each other. Some studies show benefit while others show harm. Or even if they, all the studies show benefit or harm, the size of that benefit or the harm is different. In this case, this has to be evaluated statistically to see if statistical heterogeneity is present. Now, there's three things you need to do when you read a systematic review to detect heterogeneity. One is to review the tables describing the included studies. Look to see who the patients are, what diseases they have, what interventions and outcomes were done, etc. Just look at them, use your clinical judgment, and decide is there clinical heterogeneity. Number two is what I call the eyeball test. Here you review the forest plot of the included studies and see, do the point estimates line up? How do the confidence intervals look? Do they overlap? And finally, three is you review the statistical test that the authors perform to see if there is any heterogeneity present. So this is an example of one of those tables. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to review the tables of the included studies. And here's one example from that systematic review published in the Annals. And you can see under the diseases that the patients have, you can see some, this first study has patients who all have cancer. The other study has patients with heart failure and respiratory uh, diseases, etc. Look at the drugs that are used over here, two different anticoagulants. Is it fair to combine all these things? This is clear evidence of clinical heterogeneity. You have to decide, is it fair to combine these? Are we looking at only apples or are we looking at apples and oranges? So, as I mentioned earlier, heterogeneity is always present, at least clinical heterogeneity. And that's not so important. What's important is figure out, is that heterogeneity significant? To what extent does it affect the conclusions of the meta-analysis? The author should tell you that. And it should be addressed in some way. The very basic thing that really isn't overly useful is the testing for its presence. We'd really like to see them quantify how much heterogeneity is present 
But most importantly is to investigate heterogeneity and see what impact it has on the outcomes or if we can explain what leads to the heterogeneity. So let's start off with the most basic thing, which really isn't all that useful, testing for the presence of heterogeneity. And the most commonly used test is a chi-square test. And the null hypothesis of that chi-square test is that all studies are evaluating the same effect, that they're basically homogeneous. And if you see a high p-value, p-value over 0.05, and often authors use 0.1 as the cutoff, if it, the p-value is over this, it suggests homogeneity or lack of heterogeneity. Now the problem is these tests often have low power. They can miss significant heterogeneity. And the reason being is that there's often small numbers of studies included in any one meta-analysis. So we're not looking at like we have patients where we have hundreds of thousands of patients. Often meta-analyses have 5 to 10 to 15 studies, very small numbers. So these tests for the presence of heterogeneity are often not very useful. What's more useful is actually quantifying heterogeneity. And I squared is a commonly used statistic to quantify heterogeneity. And it's the percentage of variation across studies that's due to heterogeneity and not due to chance. And I squared can range from 0 to 100%. And at the bottom down here are some rules of thumb to interpret what the I squared means. If it's less than 25%, it's suggested that this is low heterogeneity. 50% is moderate. 75% or greater is, is high heterogeneity. But at least it gives you some sense of how much heterogeneity is present, not just whether it's present or not, like with that chi-square test. So here's that same forest plot. And what you need to do is look at this forest plot. This is the eyeball test. And do you think there's a lot of heterogeneity here? How do these point estimates, do they line up? Do the confidence intervals overlap? Take a minute and pause the video, look at this um, force plot and formulate your answer, and then see what the authors found and see if, it, if you agree with them. So what do you think? Do you think there's a lot of heterogeneity? Well, one thing is the authors did do a meta-analysis and combine all these studies. That's what this diamond means. But I think there's decent amount of heterogeneity here. You can see some studies that show benefit of unfractionated heparin, others that show ben benefits of low molecular weight heparin. There's some studies that show benefits, some studies that show harm. Clear evidence of at least clinical heterogeneity. Now that chi-square test was over 0.05 or over 0.01, suggesting all these studies are the same, that there's no heterogeneity. These are all homogeneous. But look what the I squared shows. The I squared is 25%, suggesting sort of low heterogeneity. But certainly not zero like the chi-square test suggested. So there is some heterogeneity there, and the differences between all these studies, there's a lot of it is due to chance, but 25% of it is not due to chance. So finally, I mentioned the most important thing is really to investigate heterogeneity. And there's two main ways this is done, is doing subgroup analyses and doing meta-regression. Detail on these concepts is beyond the level of this video, but just to know there are ways to explore heterogeneity, try to explain what is causing it. It might be that higher quality studies give a different answer than lower quality. Um, it might be that non-randomized studies give different answer to randomized. That would be looking at things like a subgroup analysis. But know there are ways to look at it and to investigate its presence. And this is important because it helps you understand the data and also can suggest further research to try to give a cleaner, um, better database of the knowledge in this particular area. This video has helped you understand more about heterogeneity. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the Contact Me section of my blog. Have a great day.